Code DS is what I'm going to talk about today and I have a limited time spent in EPO because I only have 5 hours worth of uh, videoing in EPO before I go back to KL because uh, the, the SD card is flashing already. Oh my god, only 2 minutes. Uh, uh, oh shit. So Code Geass is a very good anime and you should go and watch it. It's probably in my top 5 best uh, anime. Of course the number one best anime is Legends of the Galactic Heroes which bears a similar type of like feel to this Code Geass. So Legends of the Galactic Heroes which is a 110 OVA series versus Code Geass which has two seasons called R1 and R2. So the both of them is like about a, a a person who goes to the top and trying to like uh, do some changes to the society and whatnot, and that's is about the gist of it. The character designs of this anime called Gias or Gay S as I like to call it is very unique. It's like a female type of uh, manga, you know. Uh, back in the nineties and two thousands, the you can see that. If this manga the is for uh, Jose or Jose means in Japanese, I mean <coughs> Jose is a Japanese word for small girl if I'm not mistaken, then all the characters will have extremely large eyes, okay? In anime already you are like experiencing large eyes but in a Jose manga or a small girls manga or a manga, manga means comic, a comic for fe the female audience, the eyes will be extremely huge and there will be stars here and stars there and the body will be very long and those were the characteristics of manga for the female audience in Japan what the art looks like for all these comics that was back in the 1900s back in the 1990s and the 2000s Nowadays, I'm not sure what it looks like. Is it the same art style for this fem uh, female manga? Uh, I mean, female centric mangas? I do not know. But back then, I know. I remember in the ni 1990s and 2000s, it was the art style, the female art style, the, the women who drew all this, and as well as uh, they are the authors as, as well. They have a certain type of. Uh, art direction or art characteristics big eyes extremely huge eyes stars in the eyes and very long uh, proportions for the characters so Code Geass the design and the story is I think uh, is I think is uh, based on on an author who did five star stories five star stories I haven't watched uh, Five star stories. I'm not sure what the hell it is. It's more like a galactic thing as well. So <coughs> maybe one day. But I, I have a code Gias to enjoy. I think uh, yeah, it's it's uh, the design and maybe the story is by some group of girls by the name of Clanet. Was it Clanet? Uh. Planet. I'm not sure actually the is it planet? Okay, I, I, I can't I'm watch, looking at the Wikipedia and uh, I'm not sure actually. Kogi is one of the best animes ever. You got to go and watch it because it's so good. It's so good. The art style is pretty good. The the direction, the art, uh, is very consistent. But there was only one part, one episode where the art style just became a bit shitty. I think they sourced it out to Korea or China. So you know what it happens in those studios. Sometimes they are out of time. If I mean they go out of time and they just simply draw, and the director or the quality control person wasn't paying attention. So. Uh, there's a deadline and they have to fill it up or meet it as soon as possible before they air the episode 
in the TV so it's just good I think I have a lot of things to say about Code Geass I can like do a very long uh, video about it but constraint of time and I'll be here forever spewing uh, praises for Code Geass the designs of the Mecca is also very good, especially the Gurun Lagan. The Gurun Lagan is the red one. The other one, the opposite uh, faction, which is the one which is in white, is like forgettable or not forgettable, it's just like white in color. Whereas the Gurun Lagan went through a lot of like evolutions, uh, they keep on like uh, increasing the, the mark, you know, mark 1, mark 2, mark 3, or something like that. So they keep on adding on stuff on that Gurun Lagan. That's the most noticeable uh, mecha robot in the two season series. It's red in color and has a like, like a claw and kills people like a badass. And of course, uh, what better more to like a mecha when it's piloted by a very cute girl by the name of Karen. Of course, uh, in one episode, we get to see her nipples, so I think that's fan service. Not sure. I think it's in the English dub, whereas the Japanese dub, or Japanese, yeah, Japanese voice, uh, did, not, did not have it. So I was surprised when I was watching this uh, downloaded from Torrance, of course, and I see, I see Karen's nipples in in the episode where they were suddenly transported onto an island and all the four characters they were on an island and suddenly Karen was like new with nipples oh shit I don't remember any pubes but never mind so this anime has a lot of characters a lot I'm telling you Whew. so many characters it's like crazy it's hard to keep track of and what it's almost similar to to like Legends of the Galactic Heroes where there are a lot of characters. The only thing that's good about the Legends of the Galactic Heroes, no, I mean it's not the only thing. The difference is Legends of the Galactic Heroes had 110 episodes to flesh out all the characters. Whereas this Code Geass only had about I think 40 plus or 50 episodes. R1 and R2, I mean season 1 and season 2 I think it's roughly about 20-ish. Episodes. I'm not sure. Let's, let me go and check how many episodes there are. Season one had about twenty-five episodes from here, and season two has twenty-five episodes as well. So twenty-five plus twenty-five is equals fifty. Fifty episodes of Code Geass versus the hundred and ten episodes of uh, Legends of the Galactic Heroes, and this hundred and ten episodes does not include the side stories or the gaijins is it Ga gaiden it's called gaiden side stories there are other seasons one there i think there are two seasons of gaiden side stories and there were another four movies i think for legends of the galactic hero so there are a lot of media or minutes in this legends of the galactic hero so you haven't checked it out yeah legends of the galactic heroes if you want to experience a space opera then that's the one for you i haven't watched uh, uh battlestar galactica the <clears throat> live version but i think it's almost similar maybe uh, legends of the galactic heroes and this uh, battlestar galactica tv series not the 1980s one the the recent ones the 2000s version of battlestar galactica so a lot of characters in Code Geass and I would say that the uh, game of uh, Code Geass is like the at the Game of Thrones anime version. A lot of characters die. Suddenly you get introduced to some characters and a few episodes later they die. Uh, sometimes the you feel the you know, you think that this is a very important character and suddenly he dies. And some people you think that are dead, then they appear in the next episode. Uh it's kind of weird. There are so many characters that I don't remember their names. One of the princess, uh, not princess Euphemia, princess Euphemia became the like the princess of slaughter or something like that. It's the big sister, which is uh, I forgot already. 
val you know Valata Valeta just the brown girl or Negro is the one with the purple hair uh, he has a, she has a side uh, a knight who has spectacles and I thought the, the knight who has spectacles died in a super explosion something like a nuclear bomb but different I thought he died saving Lelouch so I thought he was sucked into the blast but he did not he became a guy with black specs black specs because he is blind not sure I think maybe it's because of the I have no idea actually, maybe it affected his, his uh, eyes and he became more like sensitive to light, that's why he's wearing specs. I thought he was blind because he was wearing black specs at the end of the episode. But suddenly at the end of the episode he was holding a gun and rushing towards some some place to rescue people. So can't have a blind man with a machine gun right running. <coughs> he might trip and fall and shoot everybody and all his comrades. <coughs> So a lot of characters, but the main characters, of course, would be uh, Zero or Lelouch of Britannia. He is a character to behold. Uh, you can see he is like uh, arch nemesis. No, arch nemesis is like a anti-hero of sorts. You like to say like, see him succeed. And want to have those big set pieces where you are surprised. Yes, this anime grabs you by the balls because after each, mostly after each episode, there will be a cliffhanger, so you are left gagging for more. It's like at the, you are so excited, you are almost going to come, but you can't ejaculate by the end of the episode because there was a cliffhanger. Therefore, you have blue balls, and you have to wait one week for the next episode to release your ejaculate into the atmosphere so there are a lot of cliffhangers in this anime it gets you excited I remember back then when I was in uh, Wales uh, Wales no, wait 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 Ogmore Will, Wales Britain I watched this religiously I had uh, internet back then and and uh, every week there's in one episode and wow I love it very good the character, the main characters are fleshed out quite nicely. Of course, there are some uh, very famous scenes like the scientist girl who made the nuclear bomb uh, rubbing her clitoris on the edge of the the table because she was thinking about some other princess so she's kind of like a lesbian. I did not like her big spectacles but in the end, by the end of the, the season 2, almost by the end of season 2, Redemption of course is a very powerful uh, plot device. She, she became a bit older and sexier actually. At first she wasn't that sexy but she became sexier. I can talk a lot about the, the characters. There were many very funny situations where Karen uh, wanted to like kill Lelouch. When you, I mean a lot of weird situations, a lot of funny moments. Uh, so many funny moments then there's the witch uh, that's also quite funny you will hear her team who uh, I can't sing the team out actually and of course uh, what is what is joyful about this uh, anim anime is the characters there you like Lelouch you like the girl with the green green hair <sighs> so many great characters in this oh my god I can't like I should not speak too much about it because this is a very good anime. I, I, I can just discuss it all, but I can't remember the name, so what's the point of discussing it when I can't like reference the characters properly? And you wouldn't remember the names as, as well. So many things happen. So many great mechas. I can talk about the mecha design, the, the me mecha that was sacrificed, who looks like a sphinx with cauldron cannons which was dismantled from the prototype mecha put on the flagship unfortunately and the remains of that awesome things mecha was transformed into a generic shield wielding mecha which was disappointing because the shield wielding mecha which I've forgotten the name of is so generic as fuck and that's the main characters Mecha, uh, why? Why did you like design such a uh, 
why did you demolish a good looking mecca to take off the cannons and put it on a flagship and what you're left with you transform it into a shield building mecca that looks generic as fuck and boring and ugh. there are a lot of instances where there is like some backstory the script was good some parts of the the they call situations there it was quite tense very tense indeed uh, one episode where there was so many things happening i'm not sure which uh, episode it was but i watched it last night it was so good the the dialogue there were like maybe six people in the room no seven seven people in the room and they had dialogue for each character maybe to interject into the into the speech and it made things very interesting i wish i could find the the clip for you but believe me if i wanted to make a very good video i can splice all these videos in but of course copyright I'm scared i'm scared of copyright claim it's good okay code gears watch it it's so good code gears oh and one of the reasons why i watch i'm i've like watch it again the r1 and r2 seasons is because they announced that there is a third season coming soon it's called uh, spoilers alert Re the resurrection of lelouch britannia so there will be a third season i'm excited i'm pumped but i'm also quite disappointed because r1 and r2 had a very satisfying ending a very conclusive ending very conclusive ending conclusive ending the main character of course, it's already been spoiled in the third season. The the third season's uh, name is The Resurrection of Lelouch of Britannia. So the second season was an awesome ending to the series for this main character. This main character. Awesome ending. A final ending of uh, the final solution for this character. The one that builds or moves the story along he was the focal point and suddenly he's he had an ending but now the third season i'm not sure what the fuck they're going to do are they going to bring him back of course besides that there were so many other green other characters like the green uh green witch who wanted to die or something like that who gave the powers or bestowed the powers of the gears to lelouch, lelouch of britannia she is still alive and she has a motivation to live instead of wanting to die there was also like pizza a sponsorship you see a lot of pizzas there the, the opening teams are very awesome ending teams also is quite awesome the most awesome opening opening team was the last one in r2 the last one uh because the animation is very we call uh, not generic it's very fluid a lot of characters moving here moving there and Sandy. a lot of those uh mecha you get to see it all the mechas the distinct mechas and suddenly it's very blurry can't like like uh can't really like recognize it there's a lot of mechas there's a lot of potential there were a lot of characters that uh had about maybe one or two minutes total screen time in the two seasons but I would like want to like learn about why they became like what they are. I mean, they are the royalties of of uh, Britannia. So many, po so much potential. And of course, there's also a, a series that I haven't watched, which is uh, called Gia's Ajito the Exile. I'm gonna watch it in an in anticipation to watching the third season, which I think I think next year maybe. I'm not sure, but. It's, very good oh yes can talk and talk and talk and do some kind of discussion but it's good it's good go watch it sayonara bye bye